why didn't anyone tell me that when summer ends, they turn off the heat? Oh my God, has it gotten chilly here in Michigan, quick. I'm John Zadar, this is On Top and Hot, and this is Tuesday, it is September 24th. Now before we dive into what we're going to look at today, I need to fill you in on some changes. I'm not going to be making videos on Wednesday anymore. I need some extra time. I really do, but it isn't for me, truly, though I'll put some of it to use. It is primarily because I've got more obligations now with my Penny Boys group. You probably don't see me over at Twitter as often as you used to, if you follow me at Twitter. I post a lot of stuff there pre-market. Between 7.20 and 9.30, I'm posting as much information as I can find, news and hot runners. But once the bell hits, I'm vacating Twitter and I'm running over to my Penny Boys group. Discord. And we got a free members page there where everybody, anybody can come in. People come in to test the waters, hang out, talk stocks, trade. That's what we're doing. We're looking for hot stocks as soon as they are moving. And we are looking for the supports and the resistances, the entries, the exits. And we're trying to make money together. And we're doing a pretty good job of it. Well, because of that, I don't have as much time to make videos, folks. And it's not like I'm not going to be making them. We're just going to take one off right now, for now, Wednesdays. So I'll give you videos on the other days. I'm going to try to keep these green videos coming out on the weekend where I teach you something. That's a little more difficult, but I'm going to do my best. So that's what we're going to be doing. So don't be looking for a video from me on Wednesday from now on, okay? Find some due diligence to do yourself. <laughs> So today we are not going to be taking a look at a hot penny stock. Well, not one particularly. Normally we like to find one hot penny stock, a stock under five bucks that's moving on the market or looks like it's ready to move. And that's where we want to catch it before it moves. Well, right now there's a lot of stocks that are moving and they're all moving for the same reason and they're all the same kind of stocks. Nah, it's not one sector. It's not technology or anything like that. It's Chinese stocks. Chinese companies on the U.S. market. Yesterday, today, whichever way you want to look at it, the Chinese government just did their interest rate cuts and a whole bunch of other stuff to stimulate their economy. This is their stimulus package. And it's different than ours and it's very complicated. But here's the thing. Chinese stocks were running today. I'm not saying every single one of them, but boy, did they take a jump. And there's a lot of excitement, not just in the market, but in China, the people. This is really for the Chinese people because they're not spending money like they used to. And China wants them to spend their money. So we're going to take a look at some of these changes that the government is making. And then I'm going to show you a few things that you may not have been aware of and then share a couple of charts with you. Three of them are not penny stocks. Three of them are, but I want you to see what's going on with Chinese stocks. And I'm going to show you how you can find Chinese stocks a lot easier than you were just thinking. It's not as hard as you might have thought. All right, so let's take a look now at what Chinese stocks are all about. Now, the first question that probably comes to mind is how many Chinese companies are on the U.S. exchange? That's a fair question. They tell us as of January 8th of this year, there were 265 Chinese companies with a total market cap of $848 billion. So it's pretty significant. And 265 is quite a lot of them. And if you didn't know where to look, that would be one heck of a chore. But I'm going to make that easy for you. Not yet, though. Right now, we're going to take a look at what is going on in China. And to get this information, I'm having to jump around to a couple different articles. I'm sure I could have gotten better information if I could get into Bloomberg or the New York Times. But there's a lot of sites that I've overused and now want to charge me. And I just don't want to pay everybody. So we'll do the best we can here, okay? U.S. listed Chinese stocks surged today following the People's Bank of China announcement of a comprehensive stimulus package aimed at boosting the economy. The key components of the package include a half a percent cut to their interest rates, which they call Reserve Requirement Ratio, the RRR. They also got a 20 basis point cut on their seven-day reverse repo rate. Now, I had no clue what this was. From what I understand, this is a seven-day loan, and I think it's from bank to banks, and there is interest on that, and they add up pretty bloody quick, so they've cut that down. They also gave a half a percentage point reduction in mortgage rates, which they direly need, folks. We're going to take a better look at their 
uh, property problem because housing has been a problem for, God, maybe 10 years for the country right now. And it is about one-fourth of their entire economy. The People's Bank of China also unified the down payment requirements for the first and second homes in China. They required 25% before, now they only require 15%. This stimulus package is viewed as the most comprehensive since 2015, offering substantial liquidity injections to the banking system. I read somewhere they're expecting a trillion dollars to come into the banking system. That's going to be good for them. Another article gives us a few more details. The chief of China's central bank said it would cut the amount of reserves banks are required to keep. There's a certain amount of money you have to actually have on premises to be in business. I do believe I read they cut it by 50%. Whoa, that's a huge cut, folks. It also slashed interest rates on its loans to commercial banks, reduced required down payments for some property purchases, and promised other moves to revive the slowing economy. Regulators also plan new policies to stabilize the stock market. They are definitely looking at their stocks. They have been falling for the last five years, down 34% overall. And today was the best day they've had in five years. Stock prices in China peaked before the global financial crisis in 2008 and have mostly flatlined since. Whoa, 2008. The housing market has floundered after authorities cracked down several years ago on excessive borrowing by developers. That was a big mistake right there, leading many to default on their debts and to fail to deliver apartments to buyers that had already paid for them. Folks, about 10 years ago, developers were just booming. They were building cities. They were building subdivisions that they were going to sell, you know, to make money, stimulate the market. And then every single house, all these buildings would need appliances, furniture, desks, all of that was supposed to stimulate the market. But because they were borrowing so much, the government chopped on them. Well, they just walked away. Housing is a main form of investment in China, and it also supports many other industries such as construction, of course, home decorating, and home appliances, among other things. <laughs> Let me give you some examples here of what I'm talking about, folks. This picture you saw up here, that is an entire city that developers were building. It's not like it existed before. None of these buildings are being used. They're pretty, they're gorgeous, there's so much space here. They just stopped building them because the government came down on them. But this isn't the only one, folks. Let me show you another one. Look at that. This has been vacant for like 10 years, not finished. All of those were single family dwellings. Look at how many families they could have had up there. Hundreds of billions of dollars of wasted construction, resources, time, money, and it's just sitting there, not being used. But wait, there's more. <laughs> Look at that. This is an entire subdivision of mansions. These are not multiple dwellings. These are single dwellings, every single one of these. Look at this one back here. Oh my God. These are giant folks, and these weren't just supposed to stimulate the market by selling them, but all the furnishings, all the appliances, all the artwork, all that stuff that went into it. Nothing. So right now, the government's got a program. Anybody who will come along and buy these vacant cities, these vacant subdivisions, the government will cover 100% of the loan. How about that? All right, let's see what else we can go. It's about time for me to tell you where you can find these stocks because that's really all you need to know, folks. There's a lot of stimulus going on and you can get more information. Maybe you can get over to Bloomberg and read what they've got to say or New York Times. Read all of this. You'll find that since they did this, copper is surging. Oil is starting to run. This is affecting a lot of markets, and obviously those aren't Chinese markets, but this is a big deal, and that's my whole point. When an entire area starts to rise, you need to pay attention. As they say, when the waters rise, every vessel, small and big, rise with the waters. So right now, I am over here at stockanalysis.com, stock analysis. You come over here. This is the page you're going to basically end up on. You click this button, stocks top stocks. It will bring you over, <laughs> over to this page here. Scroll down the page. 
And right here, it'll show you non-U.S. stocks listed on the U.S. exchange. They filter them all out for you. Click China and boom, you're in there, folks. This is everything you need. This is all the Chinese stocks listed here. Now, I prefer this one over the other one I'm going to show you for one primary reason. They allow me to filter. I can look at them by percentage gains, stock price, which is what I'm looking for. You know, when you just go by percentage gain, if I'm a trading penny stocks, I've got to sort through all those stocks. Thank God, though, there's only 265. And I know that sounds like a lot, but it really isn't. So you've got this page here, folks, which is going to give you lots of information that you can look at. Just at a glance, you got your price, your percentage change, the market cap of the company, and their current revenue. All at a glance right here. They say there's 279 of them. The other site you can go to is Trading View. Maybe you're familiar with this one. Come up here to Markets. Right here, when you get to this page, if you haven't come to China, <laughs> come down to Countries. Right here, float on over, drop on down, China's right there. You get all the Chinese stocks over here. Problem is, they don't let you filter. The way it comes up, they say they are most actively traded Chinese stocks uh, in order of daily volume. That's the way they do it, and it's uh, their volume. I don't know how to read that volume here. <laughs> but again, You've got a site here that will tell you percentage change, the price, and all of that. And like I said, there's only 265, 279 Chinese stocks. So finding Chinese stocks is not a problem. This morning, I was posting news. I'm also looking at scanners. I'm looking at who's running, whether they have news or not, who is running. Well, I noticed a bunch of stocks were running. They were all Chinese. And the thing when I noticed was when I was posting the charts to share the information, so many of them looked alike. Look at that. That is ticker LI, JD, and XPEV. Those are all Chinese companies. I don't believe any of them are penny stocks, but we trade everything over at the Penny Boys Group. Penny stocks, expensive stocks, we're doing it all in there. Well, <laughs> look at those charts. Don't they all look the same? I thought I was posting the same chart and I kept deleting it and putting another one. And it's like, why, why did I do that again? They look so much alike. When the waters rise, they all rise together. Now, not all the stocks did this, but it's very curious to see how they move together. And that's what we're looking for with this. We're looking for more activity, folks. I don't know how far this can push and how far it can go. But right now it's happening. So right now we ought to be paying attention. All right, let me share a few examples with you of charts, the ones you just saw, but we'll get to see the whole day after I took those pictures in the morning, and then I'll show you some penny stocks that are from China as well. All righty then, let's give this a whirl. This is going to be interesting because this is not what I normally do, and I haven't exactly got a game plan here, but we'll do the best we can. We're over here at my playground. This is Think or Swim, my free trading platform, also known as TOS. So what I've got planned here is to share six Chinese companies on the American exchanges. We're going to look at three penny stocks and three that are not penny stocks. Now, we're not looking at these to invest in them. If you like what you see, well, feel free. But we're looking at them so you can see how they're affecting the market. Now, we're going to look at the charts, but we're not going to read them. I mean, you can see this has been in a downtrend for a real long time. She dropped from $46, that's not a penny stock, down to $17 here at the beginning of September. And you can see she's in the middle of a breakout right now, and she was very strong today. So we ain't got to read the charts to see what's going on here. So that's the way we're going to look at these charts. This was LI. XPEV is another not penny stock. That was at a high six months ago of about $14. Fell down to six and a half. She did break through the 200 about two weeks ago and she has already been climbing, but she had a strong surge today as well. Looking at JD, JD.com, you probably know this company. She had a low six months ago of $21. Hit a high of $35 in May. Came back down, swung around, looked like she broke out about five days ago and poured on the steam. And then today, the steam really poured on strong. Now let's come on down to the one hour view. 
Well, that's powerful, folks. She was going sideways. She started to climb a few days ago. We've getting some nice pushes here. But as you can see, at 4 in the morning, right at 4 in the morning, as soon as the market opened, this thing surged from 29.80 up to 32 bucks. And she kept climbing after market, and then she climbed all day, and it looks like she's still climbing after market, hitting a high of $33.91. And look at all of those MAs, folks. This thing is primed. Volume is strong. All of our osculators are going to the moon. This is a hot stock. Let's look at XPEV on the hourly. Well, it's already been in an uptrend for the last 20 days. Bouncing off of that 200 as she goes along, she too had that big rip at four in the morning, kept climbing, had a pullback at the bell, and then she went right back to it, hitting a high after market here, $10.75. Again, another chart with all the MAs turned up and climbing beautifully, lots of volume in the picture, and all of the oscillators are on fire. It's still a hot chart. LI's one hour view is nice. Now she's starting to pull away, isn't she? We had a turn right here on our 200 day SMA and she pushed off of that. As soon as that 200 day MA went flat, she pushed off of that, went sideways, bounced off the strong MAs here, got a surge at four in the morning. There you go, folks, right at four in the morning, continued climbing. There's a pullback at the bell and she continued pushing up. All of our MAs are climbing. All of our oscillators are hot. Folks, all of these look like hot charts. Now let's take a look at the penny stocks. First one is XHG. Let's start off with the big picture so you can see what's going on here. So this penny stock had a high back in July of $2.08, came down to a low today of 55 cents, and she launched hitting a high of a buck 80. Looks like that hit after market. 200 day MA just came into the picture and she crushed that. Osculators are ripping here. Easy Go. This is Easy Go, Easy Go Technologies. What's up with that? That doesn't look like it's running. It's not. Is it a Chinese company? It is. Why did I put it up there then? Because I want you to know not every Chinese company is going to run. Don't go putting your money on just any Chinese company saying I got a winner. That's not the case, folks. We've got to have volume to get volatility. We need the volatility to move the price. This hasn't got any of that going on right now. There's nothing happening here. We didn't have anything at four in the morning. She's been falling, falling, falling. So my point is, one, I'm not biased. I'm not trying to hype this up and make it more than it is. It is a big deal, but we're not going to say it's the hottest thing since COVID. We're, we're going to see some strong plays here but be smart about which Chinese companies you get into. Then we're taking a look at QH. Wow, look at that cup and handle. <laughs> this bad boy, I don't believe it was a cup and handle, though it could have been, I don't know. It looks like a big, big cup here. We got a low here of 25 cents in August, and we hit a high of, what? Well, let's see here. This ran from 35 cents up to $3.86. Folks, that's 1,100% gains. I have no idea what made that one run, but wow, what a rip. She came all the way back down, hitting those strong resistance or supports on our MAs, and boom, she's off and running, and she too was taking gains today. Now let's take a look at the one hour. All right, we did not get a surge at the four o'clock time when small cap stocks were, but we did get a jump. She went from about a buck 14 up to a buck 60. Not a huge run, but hey, it's a start. And any gain is a good gain, folks. Easy go, not real good on the one hour chart. She's underneath the 200 pushing up. Doesn't look like she even knows this news happened. XHG, oh man, that's beautiful. She was underneath the 200, which was falling. She is making it flat right now. It wasn't really flat here, but it's flat now. She pushed through from 55 cents, hitting $1.40 before she fell back to that nine-day SMA. And she has been pushing off of that climbing, hitting a high here of $1.80 and still climbing. All of our MAs are about ready to cross that 200. I'm liking this stock for tomorrow, folks. Osculators are on fire. Volume came in today. 
like no other day. I'm going to jump down to the 15-minute uh, one on this, folks. Yep, this is one I'm going to watch for tomorrow. XHG. She had that strong push when the bell took off. We didn't get much pre-market. We had a little. It got her over the 200. She dipped and then took off, pulled back, bounced off of the 20, not the main MAs, just the 20, and she's been pushing after market with a lot of volume after market. So she's still climbing, but I think she's got to come down. She's got to come down to the nine. See here, she was following that nine day MA all the way, touching it, touch, touch, touch. Then she pulled away here and got all the way up there. Well, when she pulled back, she only came down to here. There's still a lot of gap between that and the nine day. She's starting to fall right now and I think she's gonna bounce off that nine and I'm thinking this is gonna be hot pre-market tomorrow. So I'm gonna be watching this and this may be one we play in the Discord group. Since I brought it up again, I want to see you there, folks. I'm going to be spending a lot of time over on the free members page. We're actually trading live over there. I'm not telling you my trades. I'm bringing you a menu. Hey, folks, this stock is running. This stock is running. You see a stock you like? Hey, John, what are the supports and resistances on that? Bing, bing, bing. I'll throw them up for you. You say, so is this a good entry? I say, is it over the support? So we're learning in there. Come on, folks down below in the description it says this is the invite click it it's free come on in i'll be looking for you tomorrow the more the merrier so now you see what's going on folks there was a lot of heat today just in the six that we looked at and five out of the six took gains four out of six were really strong four out of six those aren't bad odds and if that's what we're looking at for the chinese sector We've got some money to be made here, folks. So now you know where to look. I've given you a couple sites, but hey, do your own due diligence. See if you can find more information that can help you. You know what I always say, and I mean it when I say it. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.